Well, greetings, everybody. Welcome to Monday. Hope you all are well, uh, and hope our our power up finds you well. I know it's early. I know it's Monday, uh, but uh, we are on and ready to go. Uh, and so, thank you so much for being on. I'm going to encourage you. Uh, actually, let me wait for that encouragement till some show up here. Uh, if uh, if we have some that are connected. Uh, but, man, we had a wonderful day yesterday in church. It's just great to be in the Lord's house and be challenged in the Word of God. Uh, and uh, we had a sweet time of fellowship Sunday night following the service as one of our young couples is moving out of the area. Uh, and uh, sad to see them go, uh, but excited for their future, uh, excited what God uh, has done in their lives and what, uh, what God is going to continue to do in their lives. And so we enjoyed the fellowship. Uh, we don't we don't uh, necessarily enjoy the goodbyes, but man, we know that the Lord is working in their lives. So we praise the Lord for that. Now, those of you that are just now jumping on, I know we are very early today, uh, so I'm going to encourage you hit that like button or not not that like button. Well, hit the like button, hit that share button so that others may know that we're on live. Uh, we are on quite a bit earlier than normal. I have a meeting today uh, at eight o'clock, and so I wanted to. Uh, get on a little bit earlier so that uh, so that uh, I can uh, have that meeting uh, and not not feel rushed at connecting with you for our power up. And so uh, here we go uh, this morning. We're going to be in First Corinthians chapter number one. First Corinthians chapter number one, and we're looking down at verse number thirteen. But before we get to thirteen, I want to kind of go back up to verse number twelve, uh, and uh, uh, just to kind of let us get a glimpse into what is going on, and then uh, 13, 14, and so on. Uh, look forward to, to looking at those today. So verse number 12, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 12. It says, Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. And so we see these people identifying with different uh, leaders of the faith, in fact, those identifying with Christ himself said, hey, I, I trusted uh, you led me to the Lord. Well, he led me to the Lord. Well, he led me to the Lord. Well, he baptized me and became, uh, uh, it was becoming more about bragging rights than, than actually uh, living by faith here. And so that's kind of the challenge. Verse number 13 then states this, is Christ divided, Paul is asking. Uh, was Paul crucified for you? Uh, or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? And so this is a very real uh, problem right now in, in the church where people are are saying that they are better than others because of who baptized them, because of who led them to the Lord, and so on. And Paul's saying, how can Christ be divided here? Uh, and he says, I, I wasn't crucified for you. It was Jesus. Uh, and... You're not baptized in my name. You're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and once again, we've got people looking to the man rather than looking to the Lord. And Paul's trying to try to nip this problem in the in the bud uh, quick, soon, and early because Paul said it's not about me. It's about Christ. In fact, Paul even said this. He says, "Follow me uh, as I follow Christ." Saying, "Hey, the only." The only time you should look to me is if I am following Christ. And the moment that I am not following Christ, hey, you need to you need to to look past me. You need to look to Christ. And and he's not saying, hey, look at me, look at all I've accomplished. He's just saying, as Christ works in me and as I follow Him, uh, that that's the only time that you should follow follow what I am saying, what I am teaching, what I am preaching is when I'm following Christ. And really. Excuse me, what he's saying by that is he's saying he's not perfect. And there's going to be times when he lets people down. Uh, and to be mindful of that and to follow to follow Christ, not him. Okay? Now, uh, Paul gets a little personal here. He says, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus uh, and Gaius. Uh, and, and he's saying, hey, I, uh, I baptized a couple individuals. Uh, and uh, here's who I baptize. So he's setting the record straight here. Uh, and, and then he continues in verse number 15, says, Lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. So Paul's saying, here's the reality, guys. You're all bragging about who baptized you. Here's who I baptized. 
uh, and uh, and the reason for that is because God should get all the glory. I didn't baptize anybody in my name. It's not about me doing the baptizing. Uh, it's about what baptism means. Uh, and he says in verse number 16, and I baptize also. So we see these individuals. He baptized Gaius. He baptized Crispus. Uh, and then you get to verse 16, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Uh, and Paul is just saying, hey, these are who I remember baptizing. Uh, and and then he says, once again, it's not, it's not my name that you're baptized in. It, my name means nothing, Paul says. It's about Jesus Christ. And uh, you're baptized in the name, through the name of Jesus Christ. And then Paul kind of gives, uh, uh, I want to say, not necessarily his philosophy of ministry, but really his purpose in what God has called him to do. Verse number 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of wisdom, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Uh, and people are looking to, to baptism rather than looking to the cross. And Paul says, uh, I preach unto you the gospel. What's the gospel? That we are sinners, that we need a Savior, that that Savior is Jesus. Trust him. That's, that's, that's the gospel in a nutshell. And Paul's saying, that's, that's where my focus was, teaching you the gospel. Uh, and and I, didn't, uh, I didn't preach unto you baptism. Baptism is that next step of obedience to, uh, uh, to the Lord following salvation. And he's really separating the two. As we know that there are many in the, in the church even today, but many offshoots of the church that would have, that of, of the followers of Jesus Christ that believe that even baptism uh, was a part of salvation. And, and we know that the scriptures don't teach that, but baptism is, is a proof of salvation. It's identifying with Jesus Christ, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's showing others that you are saved. Uh, and Paul is really making that distinction here, and people are putting, putting uh, um, too much emphasis on baptism and getting unnecessarily close to baptism being becoming a part of salvation. And we know that's not true. Paul uh, refutes any works-based salvation in Ephesians chapter 2. He says it's not by works, not by works, uh, we're saved by grace or faith. We know the book of Galatians, uh, he's teaching on, on, on the cross, on Jesus doing the saving, not our works-based salvation. And that's really what he's doing here. He's separating uh, baptism from salvation. He's not saying that uh, Christ didn't send him to baptize. He's not saying uh, that uh, he did baptize as we've read. He's just pointing out the difference between salvation, preaching the cross, and baptism. Baptism is that natural response to trusting Christ. Uh, you look at the end of this. <laughs> He says, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. When does it become made of none effect? When we add works to salvation. Uh, and James tells us uh, that uh, our works prove our salvation. Uh, they show who we are. And that's, that's important that our, our, our lifestyle changes after salvation. I think that's important. It's important that we are involved in the ministry and that we are doing things for Christ. I think that's important. Those works don't save. They really just prove our salvation. Uh, and they show others that there's a difference in us. That difference is caused by the cause of Christ. And then verse number 18, or I'm sorry, verse number 17 really quick. Uh, if works are part of salvation, then Jesus died for nothing. Uh, and we know that Jesus did not die for, for nothing. In fact, God sent his son. God gave his son so that we might have life. But if we have to work for it, there's no reason. There's no reason for Christ to die. Uh, and it's important for us to remember that. Uh, verse number 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us <coughs> which are saved it is the power of God. Uh, and think about those of us who know Christ as our Savior, the power, the power that we have in our life, that power of God, that saving power of God. 
It is not mankind that saves. It is God that does the saving. And to the world, the world sees, sees Christianity uh, and, uh, and would laugh at us, would mock us. Uh, they, would, they would note the foolishness of preaching. That's what God has chosen to spread his word. Uh, and so we must be faithful to preaching the good news of the gospel. Uh, and just uh, maybe one, maybe two thoughts to go along with that. Remember Jesus as he ascended into heaven. He commanded the disciples to go into all the world, preach the gospel. He commanded them to baptize them. He commanded them to teach them. Uh, commanded the disciples to, to preach, baptize, teach. Uh, and that's what we are called to do today, to preach the gospel, see people saved. God does the saving. We do the preaching. Uh, then to baptize people, those that are saved are baptized, and then disciple, teach them. Uh, and uh, we disciple them in in the Lord and teach them what it is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and I'll tell you this, the preaching of the cross, he asks this to them that perish in foolishness, but to us, which are saved, it's the power of God. The word of God changes lives. Our world, our, our world is, is messed up right now. There's a, there's a lot going in our world that is not right, that goes tr contrary to the, world, to, to the word of God. What does our world need? It needs this right here, the gospel. And that's why, you know, every, every Sunday I, I try to give the gospel, and, and I hope that for our church family that the gospel doesn't get old. Uh, and I know that uh, as I'm giving the gospel, you could probably, you know, right where to go, you know, right where to say, because we give the gospel every Sunday. Uh, but we want to give everybody that opportunity. And the guests that come in, we want to give them opportunity uh, to trust Christ as their Savior. Uh, and, uh, and I don't want us to ever forget uh, what our salvation is. Uh, it's Our salvation is a gift that comes from God. And... Uh, part of one of the reasons for giving the gospel in every service is for for our church family to know and understand uh, what the gospel is and then be and then be able to because they've heard it be able to give the gospel themselves uh, and that's one of the reasons for sharing the gospel often uh, is is it's an opportunity to teach and tra train how to give the gospel uh, and you know where to go from the scriptures uh, and then Man, we just, we just live it out, and we go and we preach the gospel, okay? Uh, so uh, we're going to end there today. Thank you for being on. It went a little bit long here, and I'm, I apologize for that. Some great verses there uh, for us, some great reminders for us there from the Scripture about preaching, about the gospel, about um, uh, salvation, baptism. Uh, and, man, it's important for us to keep the main thing the main thing and not get distracted. It's not, it's not the man. It's Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not me. It's not, it's not spiritual leaders. It's not other pastors. It's not even about the disciples or the apostles. It's about Jesus Christ, and we've got to remember that. Don't look to the man. Look to the Savior. Okay? Uh, let me welcome those who are on live today, uh, or those that have commented live this morning. Uh, Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. I hope you guys have an awesome day today. Uh, thank you for being on this morning. Uh, David, good morning to you as well. Cliff and Karen, good morning. Thank you for being on. Uh, John uh, uh, and Marion, thank you for being on this morning as well. I'm not sure if both of you are on, so I apologize for that, but thank you for watching. Uh, Gene, good morning to you both as well, or to you as well. Sorry, uh, maybe it's a little too early for me. Uh, but Gene, good morning. Hope you have a great day uh, today. Be sure to share our power up. Uh, as we won't be on at 8.30, uh, this is our power up for the day. Once again, thank you for, uh, for getting up with me uh, and watching here this morning. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, we'll touch base again tomorrow. Tomorrow we will have our regular scheduled power up at 8.30. Uh, thank you for your understanding here this morning. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.